In this video, we're going to create a SQL database in the Azure portal. My name is Chris Peachman. I'm a Microsoft MVP. You can follow me on my blog at buildazure.com or on Twitter at buildazure. Now let's go into the Azure portal and see how to do this. Now I'm logged into the Azure portal. To create a SQL database, we're going to go up in the left-hand navigation on the right to the top and click plus new. And then in the different organized categories, we're going to select databases. And underneath databases, our first option is SQL database. This is going to allow us to create a Azure SQL database platform as a service type database. First, we need to set the name of our database. And then we need to specify a resource group that we're going to put this database in. in and this is going to be the grouping for the different resources for our database. In this case, the server and the database. We could also put an application in here as well if we wish to later. However, we want to organize, manage, and secure these resources in Azure. Then we need to select a source. We can select from a blank database to create a new database and start from scratch. Or we can select a backup if we have an uploaded backup that we want to restore from. We can also select sample and create a new database that uses the AdventureWorks sample that has some schema and data seeded in it for us. In this case, I'm going to select the AdventureWorks sample database. The next thing to configure is the server. So click on server. And this is going to give us a list of the servers already created in our subscription. Right now I don't have any SQL servers created, so I have to click create a new server to create a new one. You could pick an existing one or create a new one at any time. Then we need to add a name for our database server. And as you can see, the name of Adventure Server is already taken, so I added a number at the end of it to make it unique. The name of the server needs to be unique because it's used as a subdomain of this database.windows.net domain name. And this is actually the domain name that's assigned for the endpoint to connect to when connecting to this database server. Then we need to specify a login name and password for the admin account on this server. If we try to say SA, it will not allow us. You can see in the tooltip, there's some restrictions on the name. So we can't use names like admin, administrator, SA, root, BB manager, and there's a few others. So we'll just use the name demo in this case, and it'll work. You'd have to think of a name to use in your production environments or dev environments appropriately. Then enter in a password and confirm the password. Make sure that we're typing that incorrectly. Of course, I did not type it correctly in one of them, which happens fairly frequently to me fix that here. There we go. Now I got it. Then we'll select the location. This is the Azure region. We want to host our database server and all the databases within it. So you can pick from the available Azure regions. In this case, I'll pick West Europe and I'll click select. Now that we specified our database server, the next option is if we want to use SQL Elastic Pools. By default, it says not now. We could say yes and then configure that. I'll leave it as not now in this case. We'll just create a standard SQL database. Then the pricing tier, we can configure that. We can click on basic and we can see the minimum pricing tier is about $5 a month. Once this pricing loads, it'll show that. And we get five DTUs. A DTU is the measurement of what performance and capacity of a database server is measured in. DTU stands for database transaction unit. It's a blended measurement of CPU, memory, and disk IO for the database. And it allows Microsoft to give you kind of an even playing field in, you, in how to know how much performance your database will have, since different database workloads can be very, very different in the amount of memory, CPU, and disk I.O. usage they use. Since some, some queries in some databases could be more I.O. heavy, some could be more CPU heavy, and so on. And then we also have our storage capacity for the database, in this case, 2 gigabytes for the basic. If we click on standard, we can go and specify different amounts of DTUs from 10 DTUs up to 100 DTUs and premium lets us go from 125 all the way up to 4,000 DTUs and we can see the price goes um, way up with that but that's a pretty beefy server. In this case I'll stick with the basic and I'll click apply and then we can click create and this will go and provision that database server and also the SQL database itself. Now, while that's going, 
we'll click on resource groups and let's navigate over to the resource group adventure group here and we'll see the resources in this group and it's still creating those so we don't see them yet but it has already created the resource group one thing to note about Azure SQL database is the SQL server for Azure SQL database is really just a logical container that provides the entry point using the DNS URL and security using IP whitelist firewall rules to access the databases. It's really just a logical um, grouping and security front. The pricing and the resources, the DTUs applied to a SQL database is defined at the database level and not at the server level, which is a little bit different um, than how you would configure an a, a SQL server on premises or in a VM. I'll click refresh on this. Now we can see our SQL server has been provisioned. Um, while it's provisioning our database, let's go to the SQL server and let's take a look at that. So we can see some information about our SQL server. Right now it shows zero databases. It's still provisioning that, like I said. And then we have other features on the left here that we can go through and configure for our SQL server. The most notable one is the firewall. I'll click on that. We can configure this firewall. This firewall is a IP address whitelist. So by default, it does have allow access to Azure services turned on. This will allow the IP addresses for Azure to be able to connect to this database. So you don't need any additional configuration of the IP whitelist in order to connect up an application running in Azure Web Apps or other services to connect to your Azure SQL database by default, which is good since everything else gets dynamic IP addresses assigned when they're configured. Although if you have static IP addresses, you could turn this off. And then to whitelist an IP, you just enter in the rule name and then the starting and ending IP address in a range of IP addresses, or just make them both the same for one IP address. In this case, the client IP address is the current IP address I'm connected to on my local machine. And if I click this Add Client IP button at the top, this will add a rule that specifies my local IP address. And then I can click Save. And now I have my SQL Server configured to block all IP addresses, even ones in Azure, since I turn that off, and then allow just my local IP address here. So then I could run code or SQL Management Studio or other tools in Visual Studio and things and connect to my SQL Server just fine, and nobody else on the internet will be able to connect because their IP address won't be the IP address that I'm using. Now we can see that pop-up had already come up there. SQL Database was configured. Let's scroll over to the left and we'll refresh our resource group and we can see our database is in there. I'll click on the database and then we have in the essentials pane we can see the URL um, or DNS name rather for our SQL database server. So this is the DNS name that we'll connect to to connect to the SQL server and then we use those same login and credentials that we defined on the server to be able to authenticate with the SQL server and then we can connect to our database. Those are the values we would use to build out our connection string. There's also this connection strings option to show database connection strings. If I click on this, it's going to actually give me a snippet that I can just copy and use for a connection string to connect to this database. And then I need to replace the placeholders for the username and password that I'm going to use to connect when I do use this. And it gives me options for ADO.NET, JDBC, ODBC, as well as PHP. Now back on the SQL database blade, we can see that the pricing tier is 5 DTUs and the basic tier. We can see geo-replication is not configured. If I go over here on the left and click pricing tier, we can actually dynamically change our pricing tier. So at any time we can scale up or down our database and click on geo-replication and we can configure geo-replication to replicate our database into another Azure region for redundancy or disaster recovery type scenarios. And there's other, some other features like transparent data encryption, which you just turn on and save and it'll turn on encryption at rest with transparent data encryption on our database. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe.